Apple has always been known for their popular mainline products like the Mac, iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch, but most people aren't familiar with the historical significance of their accessories. Take Apple's headphones for example. They began as one of the many bundled items with the original iPod, but quickly became an iconic symbol that everyone associated with Apple. And today, the company dominates the headphone market with their wildly popular AirPods. So in this video, we're going to explore the history of Apple's headphones and discover how they went from being a bundled iPod accessory to becoming one of Apple's most popular best-selling products. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I want to thank ESR for sponsoring this video. If you want to help decide which topics I cover, make sure you're subscribed, and voting polls like this one will show up in your mobile activity feed. Now, let's start at the very beginning, from the first time Apple created their own pair of headphones back in 2001 for the original iPod. Back then, the headphone market was very different from today. Earbuds weren't nearly as popular, and there wasn't much variety when it came to headphone colors and styles. In fact, nearly every CD player, Walkman, and MP3 player before the iPod was bundled with a pair of on-ear headphones with a black cable. No company had ever put much thought into deviating from the status quo quo. But as usual, Apple did put in the extra thought, and they were faced with a branding challenge. How could the iPod be identified in public if the device was always hidden inside users' pockets? After all, the company had never made a mobile device before. They had a history of selling desktop computers and notebooks, which always had an Apple logo on full display while in use. But that wouldn't be the case with a pocketable mobile device like the iPod. So how would Apple overcome this problem? Well, they made sure the iPod headphones would be instantly recognizable by making them white. But that wasn't all. Apple also made the deliberate decision to include earbuds with the original iPod instead of traditional on-ear headphones, since they were not only smaller and easily fit in users' pockets, but also because they wouldn't mess up the user's hair. And to make sure people associated white earbuds with the iPod, Apple launched this iconic ad campaign which literally highlighted the white earbuds, cable, and iPod against a black silhouette. These efforts from Apple to differentiate the iPod from other MP3 players on the market paid off big time. The product quickly became a household name and reached an even greater level of popularity with the iPod Mini in 2004. Now, you might assume that since the iPod Mini was offered in colors, its headphones would also come in colors to match. But that wasn't the case. Apple continued to include the same white pair of earbuds in order to capitalize on the brand association they'd established with the original iPod. But what the company did do is decide to offer a premium pair of headphones that could be purchased separately for $40. They were called the iPod in-ear headphones and featured three different sized plastic ear tips along with improved sound quality and bass response. This was the first time Apple sold a pair of headphones independent from the iPod and marked the company's entrance into the headphone market. Now, Apple going into the headphone business also created opportunities for third-party accessory companies. It may seem weird that there are accessories being sold for an Apple accessory, but it's actually becoming a fast-growing industry since these products are actually pretty useful. For example, I dropped my first pair of AirPods in the middle of a parking lot on pavement, and the charging case was completely beat up. That's when I discovered the usefulness of a case for my AirPods Pro, like these from ESR. They're actually really affordable and prevent my charging case from getting scratched in my pocket by my keys or from being dropped. Plus, the material has a much better grip than the AirPods Pro glossy plastic, so they don't slip out of my pocket. The cases are thin, so they don't add much bulk, and they still allow for wireless charging to work. So if you're interested in buying one of these cases to protect your $250 AirPods Pro, just click the link in the description and use the code APPLEXP10 by February 29th for an extra 10% off. Alright, now in 2007, Apple completely revamped the design of their bundled headphones, integrating the stem and speaker cone more seamlessly and elongating the rubber strain relief to reduce fraying. Now, considering the new earbuds would be included with the iPhone, many features were added in order to be more phone friendly. For example, Apple included an inline remote and microphone so iPhone users could control music, calls, presentations, video playback, and activate Siri without reaching into their pocket. 
Now, with the release of the iPhone, many thought Apple might take the opportunity to include black headphones for the first time, especially considering the iPhone was only offered in black compared to the original white iPod. But black Apple headphones never happened, with the company sticking to the same white branding strategy as they always had. Now, in 2008, Apple introduced a new version of their premium in-ear headphones. They featured an inline remote and microphone, new silicone ear tips instead of plastic, and adopted a dual driver speaker design, with a woofer and tweeter integrated in each earbud for what Apple called superior acoustic accuracy, balance, and clarity. They were sold for double the amount of the previous model at $80. The next small change that Apple made to their signature earbuds came two years later in 2009, with the release of the iPhone 3GS. The company added two buttons for volume adjustment in addition to the main center button and microphone. Now, I should mention that these earbuds were not only bundled with the iPhone 3GS 4, 4S, and 3rd Gen iPod Touch, but they were also sold separately, which had only been the case for Apple's more expensive in-ear headphones. Now, at this point, Apple's headphone sales were modest. People might buy a pair to replace their old frayed iPod headphones, or maybe if you were a big Apple fan, you might opt for their $80 in-ear headphones, but either way, Apple wasn't considered a major player in the headphone market. That space was occupied by the likes of Sony, Sennheiser, Bose, and others. But beginning in 2012, that all started to change, and it's thanks to the introduction of the EarPods. You see, Apple never put much engineering effort in trying to make their bundled headphones sound and fit as good as they possibly could. And that's why there were always complaints about the iPod headphones sounding thin and tinny, while also causing discomfort after long periods of use. But with the EarPods, Apple spent three years of research and development trying to solve those problems, three-dimensionally scanning hundreds of ears to try and find a commonality that would inform the design of the EarPods, ensuring a snug, comfortable fit for as many users as possible. And in order to achieve the highest level of sound quality, Apple completely changed the speaker grill design, switching from a large circular opening in the center of the earbud to a much smaller oval opening on the side of the earbud. This new design directed sound right into the ear canal, minimizing leakage and maximizing clarity. Apple also included small openings on each earbud in order to tune mid-range frequencies, provide a consistent listening experience, reduce air pressure, and deliver powerful bass. Not to mention the earpods were more durable since they had a completely plastic design, which was an improvement over the gray rubber of the previous headphones that had a tendency of wearing down over time. All of these improvements resulted in Apple's best pair of bundled headphones yet. Now, the EarPods were not only included with the iPhone 5, iPod Touch, and iPod Nano, but they were also sold separately for $30, making them the perfect gift or stocking stuffer. Sales of the EarPods ended up outperforming even Apple's expectations and were sold out at most retail stores during their first month of release. Now, even though it's been almost eight years since the EarPods introduction, they're still being sold today. You can buy them with a 3.5mm headphone jack or a lightning connector, and the EarPods design served as a foundation for what would become Apple's most popular pair of headphones in history, the AirPods. Now, the AirPods were introduced alongside the iPhone 7 in 2016 and were the first pair of truly wireless earbuds to be released by a major company. We had seen quote-unquote wireless headphones before, but they had a wire connecting the two headphones together and often suffered from some serious compromises like size, weight, connectivity issues, and battery life. But the AirPods represented a leapfrog in wireless headphone technology, with each earbud working independently from the other, maintaining a compact form factor, connecting to devices simply and easily, and achieving 5-hour battery life. But many people didn't see the AirPods this way when they were first announced. In fact, most people were bitter about Apple removing the headphone jack from the iPhone 7 and felt like the company was simply pushing customers to buy an expensive pair of wireless earbuds. And while there may be some validity to this claim, it's also worth pointing out that Apple did include an adapter with the iPhone 7 so people could still use their existing headphones. But the complaints went further than that. Many users felt the AirPods $160 price tag was outrageous, especially considering their sound quality was only marginally better than Apple's $30 EarPods. Also, the design of the AirPods were mocked, with memes quickly appearing online comparing the earbuds to toothbrush heads and the charging case to a pack of floss. 
but as usual, the internet's opinion about Apple was wrong. The AirPods became a wild success and were regularly sold out at Apple stores across the country even three months after their release. Now, Apple eventually updated the AirPods in early 2019, adding Hey Siri support, an optional wireless charging case, a new H1 chip, 50% more talk time, and two times faster device switching. But there were no changes to the AirPods design, which was a popular request among users. Many people were asking Apple for black AirPods in addition to a new in-ear design. But Apple would only deliver on one of those requests in late 2019 with the AirPods Pro. Rumors were swirling before its release, since there were quite a few leaks leading up to its launch, and one of the most popular rumors was that the AirPods Pro would be offered in black. But just like in the past, Apple decided to stick to their signature glossy white plastic design, which had been associated with the company for well over a decade. Now, there were a lot of great features that the AirPods Pro did introduce, like a smaller in-ear design with silicon ear tips, active noise cancellation, transparency mode, better sound quality, IPX4 water resistance, and a force sensor to control music and switch between listening modes. Now, the AirPods Pro didn't replace the standard AirPods, they were simply sold as a higher-end model with a price tag of $250. But just like the original AirPods, the Pro model also sold extremely well and resulted in Apple doubling their monthly production of the product. Now, thanks to the unprecedented success of the AirPods, Apple became one of the biggest players in the headphone market in just a couple years. It remains to be seen just how large their headphone line will grow, but Apple is certainly going to be a top competitor for years to come. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.